right, what's on the bench. Uh, so this is a, uh, a three-dimensional mouse uh, called Space Mouse. So this, this, this product was actually called Space Pilot by the uh, 3D Connection per, uh, uh, company. So if you've ever used uh, something like SolidWorks or Fusion 360 or whatever, even some of the um, uh, three-dimensional modeling for 3D printers and stuff, uh, you need to get one of these. If you, if you don't have one of these, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so these, these, these will make your life great. The way they work is that the, this, this little thing here floats and it doesn't move very far at all, but if you, uh, like a like a trackball, if you or a, a joystick, if you t tilt it to the right, your model will tilt to the right. If you tilt to the left, your model will tilt. Tilt it this way, your model will tilt. Tilt it that way, your model will tilt. You can rotate, so you can turn it, and then your model will rotate. This way, your model will rotate. Uh, if you push on it, your model goes down. If you pull on it, the model goes up. So really, it's like grabbing the object. In, in three dimensions and just doing everything with it, right? So this is always on my left hand and my mouse is on my right hand and that's the way I do CAD. Um, so I found this in the trash can decades, probably two and a half decades ago, <laughs> something like that. I found it in the trash can and uh, obviously it has HP logo, so it, you know, it's vintage. So HP used to build their own CAD software. They had ME10, ME30, mechanical engineering and uh, this was this was part of the package it's also got other things a bunch of buttons and there's a, there was, there's an lcd panel here that tells you what the buttons do and you can program it and blah 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 blah. and uh, the display had broken and so somebody threw it in the trash can because the display had broken doesn't mean that the trackball thing or the, uh, the mouse part didn't so it this so fun actually everything functioned fine except for the display so i've used it for like i say about two and a half decades now um, i did a lot of uh, solidworks modeling when i was doing optical design and uh, you would do a complete solid uh, SolidWorks model, and then you could import it into Optical CAD program, and you could rate, tra rate, uh, trace rays and stuff through it, or you could go back and forth between the two. Anyway, uh, it's a USB uh, USB device, USB A, of course. Um, but uh, problem with it is, it still works perfect. Well, this part works perfect. Still works perfect, except it's so old now, it won't work with the new drivers. And you have to use one of the old drivers. There are, there are old drivers available, but then it's not supported on other packages and stuff. And um, I was having problems with Fusion 360. And anyway, I decided to buy a new one. Um, so here's a picture of that. And it gets rid of all of the other fancy stuff. It's just, it's just this part, which is the only part you really need. All right, so I bought that. About $169, not cheap, but... Uh, now it works with everything I've got, so that's good. But I have this one, and uh, I think we'll do a teardown because I've always been fascinated. How how does this thing work? How does it? It's kind of spring loaded. It doesn't move very far. I, three dimensional. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's just accelerometers or it has some type of weird optical sensor. I I don't know, but we're gonna find out. So let's uh, let's get out some. Uh, yeah, let's get out some uh, screwdrivers. All right, I took out a lot of screws and uh, it's got a big metal plate in it. That's just for, uh, that's just for weighting it down. There's a connector here we can get rid of. And i put that on the floor. All right, what do we got here? PC board. Uh, here's the LCD. Another connector here for the LCD. And let's see, how do you... How do you we got the thing out. So this is the thing. A little... Uh, a little bit of ribbon cable on it. Yeah, but the sensor here does all the spring. Oh, I can see springs in it. It's got actual springs. That's kind of cool. All right. And the springs are soldered down. And what's the best way to open this up? Hmm. Maybe, uh, 
Let me take a closer look at it. I'll try to figure out how to open this up. All right, so this thing goes in there. I, I cut the cut the spring so I could pull this piece off. So the springs are set up for the, the push-pull thing. Um, so that's the only thing that floats this thing in there are these are these three th three springs but but uh, it's got some uh, Little rubber things here that just limit your Limit your crashes to the side of the thing dampens it But here is the guts inside there are um, Let's change the camera a little bit here there there are these LEDs two LEDs and then down here there are two optical sensors so you've got two three pairs of LEDs and three pairs of detectors so they go into this device and inside here it's hard to see but inside here are three mirrors so there's a mirror this way this is a mirror this is a mirror this is a mirror so the light comes in here and bounces off that mirror and then two of the detectors can see it and so you've got three different paths of light in and they split to these three sensors so it's basically measuring the distances and and as you uh, rotate it it can it can see that if you get closer or farther away everything is a factor of these uh LEDs and sensors. Yeah, that is fascinating. That is fascinating. It's got a. It's got a. Uh, HC forty fifty two. Yeah, it's an analog multiplexer. I think I covered it on the channel. In fact, it is a one to eight. Uh, multiplexer so basically there's a bunch of things that you're uh, pointing to and then reading it out right so you're scanning you're always scanning uh, so you can limit the number of IOs that come out of this thing so yeah I just scan all those things calibrate it and detect it run it through an algorithm there you go totally fascinating Totally fascinating. LEDs, detectors, one on the top, one on the bottom, LED, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then they just shine on mirrors. Amazing. All right, I took a closer look at it and there's no mirrors. Uh, so there's an LED here and it, it send out light. And this is a baffle, okay? And there is a slit in it, okay? There's a slit, and the light can go through that slit and gets to the detector. So this one talks to that one, and this one talks to that one. So these are three sensors and three LEDs. And this is a baffle, a baffle, and a baffle. Now, on the top, remember there's pairs. So there's a, a, a this is on top, and then it's duplicated down below. The LEDs on the top, shine through um, horizontal baffles okay so the little slit is a horizontal slit and the led on the bottom goes through a vertical slit so one can detect uh, one motion and one can detect the, op the other other motion so each 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 axis has a horizontal and vertical sensor uh, so you have three axes of horizontal and vertical so yeah, I, I didn't really say that very well. So here's, here's the baffle in there. There's a slit on the top and there's a slit on the bottom. And so uh, one of the LEDs uh, shines through this vertical slit and one of them shines through the horizontal slit. And then on the other side are two detectors Okay, so those two detectors see these lights. So one can detect the up and down movement as it goes up and down, and one to side to side. This one's not going to change if it goes up and up and down, but if you go side to side, this one changes. This one won't change if it goes side to side, but it will change if you go up and down. So 
Yeah, that's what it is. Wow. Three axis. Fancy, fancy, fancy system. Somebody was clever.